The Midwest Pioneers are on the move. How you doing, everybody, from the Civic Center in Hammond, Indiana? Over the special Midwest Pioneer Roller Derby Network, I'm Chet Kopic along with Jerry Seltzer. The challenge of the Pioneers versus the San Francisco Bay Area Bombers. The best of the West getting it together here in a Roller Derby hotbed. Hammond, Indiana, second period of play. We're in the fifth period. Distaff Wheeler's on the track. Jamming right now for the Bay Bombers, number 33, Vicki Cooper, number 35 is Monica Guest. Jamming threads at this moment, number 50, Rita Williams for the Pioneers, red and blue Pioneer uniform with white numerals. Down goes Rita Williams. This jam has been called off now with the Bay Bombers totaling two points on this particular play. We're all netted up. 19-19, Jerry. Oh, look out, we got one going down to the other end. There we are. A uh, penalty on Rita Williams. She and to uh, Carol Meyer have been going at it. I expect Joan West and Margie Lazo to explode here. Uh, we want to mention again, this game is being shown on the Pioneer Network. It is also being seen on the Bay Bomber Network. It's a visiting game for the Bombers. Here it goes! Margie Laszlo and Joan Weston getting together with each other early. We're in the fifth period, six, seven, and eight coming up, plus interviews. By the way, these two have a big match race coming up Friday, March 9th, at the Keel Auditorium in St. Louis. You fans in that area, be sure and see that game. And a great match race. These two teams back together Friday, March 9th, 8 p.m. at Keel Auditorium. The Bombers and the Pioneers, probably the two greatest rivals in the International Roller Derby League. Joan Weston, of course, formerly women's captain of the Bombers, now doing a great job with the Pioneers. All right, to bring you up to date, Pioneer girls on the track, 58 Darlene Blarney Stone Forbes, 57 Joe, 56 Nybauer, 51 Lanika Sonovich, the Strawberry Fields Forever Kid, one half of the Giggly Twins combination, along with Sherry Eric. The Ice Cream Kid is out of this game with a foot injury, but she'll be back, you Pioneer fans. Don't worry about little Sherry Eric. Lots of determination. She's only going to sit out this game. She's coming back for more. Out of the jam right now, number 36 for the Bay Bombers. That is Armida Ortiz. She is followed by Susie Nybauer for your Midwest Pioneers. I say your Midwest Pioneers, just a little bit of favoritism. You fans watching on the Bay Bomber Network. I handle the television along with Jerry Seltzer for the Pioneers. This is my club, just like Walt Harris tends to get just a little bit carried away talking about your cause. Couple of one-on-one -on -one situations, we're going to have a penalty. Dolores Tucker is going to sit. Right now, both clubs are back at full strength. Weston and Laszlo have returned to the turf here in the Hammond Civic Center. Down goes Dolores Tucker. Oh, look at Weston. Look at Weston. Armand is Up dealt by Joni Weston. I want to work on Laszlo. Joni Weston, the Golden Girl. I find go. Down goes Laszlo. Action all over the bank track. Out of your camera for one shot. You missed a tremendous belt on Marge Laszlo by Joan Weston. That's what all the bangoing was all about. So as we await for the official determination, lots of aggressive play here in the fifth period. Just over three minutes remaining. Pioneers, Bay Bombers, I'm Chet Kopic along with Jerry Seltzer. Hope you fans are having fun. Stay with us. This is the sport of the 70s. The Pioneers and Bombers are on a series in the Southwest and the they return to the Chicago Amphitheater Sunday, March 11, 3 p.m., a big match race there between Bob Hine and Charlie O'Connor. Remember, kids are half price at the Amphitheater. They also have games at Naperville Central High School Monday, March 12th. That's Naperville Central High School Monday, March 12th. Hammond Civic Center Thursday, March 15th. The Polar Dome in Dundee on Friday, March 16th. Indianapolis State Fairgrounds Coliseum Saturday, March 17th. And of course, that big game in St. Louis. Friday, March 9th, the match race. Margie Laszlo, Joan Weston, here we go. Rita Williams for the Pioneers. 50 white numerals, stripe at jamming him, but on the running race, running the 440, she calls it off. Not wishing to undertake the challenge of number 35, Monica Gester, number 37, Carol Peanuts Meyer of the Bay Bombers. Carol Meyer's, of course, 4'11", 95 pounds, eight times an All-Star since 1961. If you would like to have a roller derby game scheduled in your area and you have a gym at a high school or a college and you were perhaps a sponsoring group, or you have an arena that seats more than 2,500 people, write to Roller Derby Bookings, Post Office Box 1827, Oakland, California, 94604. And remember, any arena that can hold a basketball court can hold a roller derby game, and maybe we'll skate outdoors in summer. You tell us about that at your auditorium, arena, or ballpark. We'd love to hear about it. 
Great fundraiser. This is relatively always excitement. These fans here in Hammond having themselves a ball. By the way, at the start of this telecast, Walt, this is a new opening for the fans watching on the Bay Bomber Network. That is not the Oakland Coliseum with its crowd of 35,000. That is Chicago's White Sox Park. The Pioneers draw, drew 50,000. Down goes Marshy Lazo on that play. And maybe the Bomber fans can outdo that this year, Chet. Maybe they can. We're one on the up on you right now, Bay Bomber fans. Pioneers with the house record outdoors. Brady Williams lowers the boom on Carol Myers doing the balancing act that she maintains. Tremendous body control by number 37. Williams passes the pack with the help from Joan Weston of the Pioneers that reap the harvest. Three Midwest Pioneer points on that particular play. Williams going with the speed. Weston the big assist. Really 500 people here at the Hammond Civic Center. That's why they come out here every Thursday night in Hammond. If all the fans around the Chicago area or anywhere in Indiana get out here and see a game every Thursday in Hammond. The next one, by the way, March 15th. Time is running out in this period. Are you fans watching in Chicago and St. Louis while the Pioneers are on the road? Now, this is only on the Pioneer Network. Look out. Laszlo really going after West. West is going to try to get it back. Next week on the Pioneer Network, you will see Chet Topic and Don Drury at Madison Square Garden in New York City bringing you a chief and Jolder game. Be sure and watch that. You fans on the Bomber Network, you're going to see a Bomber game next week. Well, that is the end of the fifth skating period with the score. The Pioneers 23, the Bombers 19. A game that's had it all so far for the purists, for the people who like rugged action, for the people who like it physical, for the people who like speed. This is where to be always action on the bank. Track. Come on, you fans in Chicago. Get out there, root for the Pioneers. St. Louis, I want to hear from you. Give me the mail. Let me know how you enjoy the telecasts. Lots of mail so far, averaging better than 1,000 letters a week. Most of it very, very gratifying. Lots of questions on the training school. Looking for April 1st in Chicago. Please, if you can, no more letters on the training school. We'll bring you up to date that much, I promise. Buffalo Boyd, the big guy, number 36 for the Bay Bombers. 53, Eddie Hessen, striped helmet for the Pioneers. Trying to move by the moving wall, as Walt Harris likes to call him, and he does just that. Hessen makes Buffalo Boyd miss. Major and 25 pounder are going to go up and over. Put him in the cradle, up and over and out onto the basketball That's going to be a penalty. That's going to be a penalty. Buffalo Boyd is going to sit. He's out of the track. Putting on the finishing touch. Look out something for less than a masterpiece. I'm afraid it's really exploding. By the way, two weeks from tonight, or from this game, rather this afternoon, on this Pioneer Network, you're going to see the Bombers and Pioneers from Dayton, Ohio, the University of Dayton down there. So even though the Pioneers are on the road, you fans on the Pioneer Network, you will see games in the next two weeks. You fans watching on the Bomber Networks, the Bombers return home to the San Francisco Bay Area, opening there at Keysar Pavilion, Sunday, April 22nd, against the Jolder. The live program returns to Sundays on April 15th, when you'll see a game on Sunday, April 15th, from Madison Square Garden in New York between the Bombers and the Chiefs. They also meet April 23rd in San Jose, April 25th at the Oakland Auditorium, April 26th in Richmond, and April 27th at the Cow Palace. There are big games in the Seattle Center Arena, Saturday, May 12th, and the Portland Coliseum, Sunday, May 13th. Bob Dansell, number 34 for the Bay Bombers, number 50, of course, Nick, the Greek sneak scopus for the Pioneers, and down goes Nicky at the top of the Bay Bomber turn. Now Tony Roman trying to help his teammate out of a blocking capacity. Here goes Dynamite Tony trying to work on Tony Smith. Tony against Tony, down goes the Pioneer guy. Down goes Bald Eagle Hind. Around and around goes Bob Dansell. There they show the act of brotherhood with four Bay Bomber points on that particular play. So, all of a sudden, Things take a twist with 9.25 remaining in the sixth period of play in Hammond. A couple of Bay Bomber pennants in the crowd. Score, Pioneers 25, the Bay Bombers 23. The fans watching in St. Louis, uh, you can listen to the Pioneer Report on radio every day at 5.15 p.m. Check your newspaper for the station. And we've had a lot of comment on that, Chet. Uh, maybe in the Chicago area, the fans, uh, whoa, look out who would like to get the scores and daily information on their team, perhaps contact your favorite radio station. Uh, we can get that in Chicago, in the San Francisco Bay Area during the season. Of course, the Bombers have the Bomber Report. 
Tony Roman seems to be having his troubles here. The little guy, Dynamite Tony. Oh, look at this one. Trying to regroup with the pack. Out goes Buffalo Boy, the big kid. Pete Boy, 225 pounds. Number 36 for the Bay Bombers. Bay Bomberman, 38. Paul, 37. Roman, 31. Mallory, number 33 is Johnny Rice. Here comes Buffalo Boy. He'll match it up with Tony Smith. Our guy working out of the pivot. Showing him, locking him up in the pack. Bay Bombers trying to slow it down to a standstill if they can. Let their big guy use his physical bulk. Buffalo Boyd ain't gonna beat you with speed, baby. He's gonna try to beat you with those shoulders, and that chest, with those big, tree like thighs of his. I'll tell you something, you Bay Bomber fans, you got yourself a kid in Buffalo Boyd. Smith with the elbow. Ooh, out, twice, three times, third and ten. Buffalo maybe better get ready to punt. Tony Smith beckoning to him. Confidence starting to build. I'm just about running out of the jet. Bang goal! Oh, Charlie O'Connell is screaming. Hey, is O'Connell is livid. He is absolutely livid. Referee Bill Morrissey is just standing there calling the decision. It's 25 to 24. Pioneers ahead by one. We've got one going at the other end of the track. Pete Boyd would get ruled out of this game. The officials are trying to protect him from himself. He is great. Buffalo Boyd on the chase. Down he goes. Oh, what action we're going to have. They oh. will heal out of joy in St. Louis. These two teams meet that match race, Laszlo and Weston. And of course, Sunday, March 11th, get your tickets early. Any ticket drawn out in the uh, Chicagoland area. See these teams at the amphitheater when they return. Now we go Hines. Of course, Hines got that big match race with Charlie O'Connell on match 11 Sunday at the amphitheater. Finally, things seem to have quieted down. It may take him about a month and a half to issue the penalty. Oh! Charlie O'Connell just kicked Tony Smith. Charlie O'Connell, oh! Boy, the feeling between this te these teams has just exploded here. The referees are gonna have to get this thing back together. While they're trying to, we'd like to tell you uh, about the rules and how to violate them. Send your name, address on a postcard or a letter to Roller Derby Rules, Post Office Box 1828, Oakland, California, 94604. Please include the zip code number of the station on which you're now watching this program, and we will send you a free copy of the Roller Derby Rules, which are co being completely ignored in this game. Referee Bill Morrissey has walked over to issue the penalties. There are going to be a number of penalties, Jerry Seltzer. As a matter of fact, I believe that uh, under the rules of roller derby, of course, you can only have two men on each side in the penalty box. I believe... Oh, he said more... O'Connell there, and O'Connell says I'm not going. I believe that there have been more than two penalties issued on each side. Look you can't hear O'Connell. the determination. This crowd is absolutely in bedlam. There is Charlie O'Connell, who kicked Tony Smith. You know, right after this jam, I want to tell all the fans about a big contest and uh, something they're all going to want to hear about, especially in the Chicago land area. So we're skating three on three. Buffalo Boyd lowering the boom on Tony Smith. Down goes Tony. James Paul passes Tony Smith. Now he's working with John Early. Oh, dynamite Tony Roman goes to work on Smith. Action all over and off the track. Now the jam is over with. Referees have got themselves a man-sized job going on. 424 left in the sixth period. Pioneers right now up by Uno, 25-24 over the Bay Bombers. And once again, the confab amongst the men in stripes is underway. Well, let me tell you about a big, big contest. If you can, uh, fans in the Chicagoland area, you can guess the final score of the game of March 11th, Sunday. You can fill it out free. You get an entry blank at any Ward's ticket booth at any Ward store starting this week. These can be filled out and turned in, and you may win a free dinner with the Pioneers. 
tickets to a Pioneer game, autograph pictures, you'll meet them. Don't miss out on this one, and it's absolutely free. Get your entry blank at any Ward store at the ticket booth. Also for Hammond, we've got a big poster contest going with our next game here on Thursday, March 15th. The fan who draws the best poster or banner, we got some up tonight. Look at the other end of the track there. One, uh, they won a award here a few weeks ago. Not the bango. That's what Chet always says, of course. But if you uh, have any talent in that way and want to bring it out, there it is. Something like that. Well, you may win a bike, courtesy of Wards, or a stereo outfit, also courtesy of Wards. That's March 15th. And remember, on Friday, uh, Saturday, March 10th, at the Ward store in Munster, you're going to meet in person Joan Weston and Nick Scopus at 2 o'clock. And there is Charlie O'Connell being worked on by Bob Hyde. Back at the pack. The great sneak. Opus Hyde in the jam with number 31, Mallory. Bye, bye! O'Connell nails his own teammate. And the Pioneers put in one point. Charlie O'Connell trying to go to bat for Alvin Mallory. Tried to give him the boost, and it did work to say the least. Result, Pioneers with one point. By the way, Jerry Seltzer, for all those fans who figure that bango sign is compliments of my mother, it comes to us from Cindy Komar, Mary Ann Kopchak, John Pettigrew, and James Pettigrew. Some very fine fans here in the Hammond area who wanted to bring along a bango sign to show their appreciation of the Pioneers. Well, how did you happen to know their names, Chuck? Because they owe me money. <laughs> According to Jim Holmes, he plays bango with them on Wednesday night. And Lord only knows what that is, Chet. All right, back to the action on the turf in Hammond. 34, Dan Self leading the locomotive. Early right behind him, Midwest Pioneers. Pioneer men, Early, Smith, Cowboy Hill, Scopus, Bald Eagle, Bob Hyde, Buffalo Boyd for the Bay Bombers, O'Connell for the Bay Bombers, James Paul, James Cook for the Bay Bombers. All leaving up five on five. Both squads and both right down goes Bob Danso. Here comes Early, getting out with his stride. And look at Tony Roman. There you may have seen a Tony Roman deck John Early. And my Tony off the track, swiped out at him with the helmet, caught John Early, but good. But John is back and he is skating again. Now Dancel lowers a forearm on John Early. Down goes Johnny with the goatee. Gets it back up and gets it together once again. Tremendous resiliency on the part of the young pioneer. Down goes Dancel. O'Connell goes to work on it. Come on, Bald Eagle, go to work on Charlie O. Jam time almost over with. Bald Eagle lowers the boom on Dancel. We'll wait for the determination. No points on this particular close. Oh, look at those fans over there. They are really giving it to Charlie O'Connell. He's called for illegal blocking. By the way, uh, we're getting an awful lot of mail, but if you would like to add to it and receive a personal letter from Chet Copic, or if you have any question about Roller Derby that you'd like answered, write to Chet Copic, care of NES 300 North State Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60610, and we'd like to confine this to you fans along the Pioneer Network. We'd like to hear what you think about these new weekly Pioneer telecasts. Remember, on many cities on which uh, you're getting this game, you're seeing it the same week as, week as being skated. We've got a lot of good comments, Chet. A lot of fans write they, they don't like the interleague games, but uh, as we said, the more exposure that Roller Derby gets and you can see teams against the other league, uh, that's fine. A lot of questions about the training schools. Please don't write anymore. We're going to give you all the information on that. And remember, you don't have to have any experience to be a Roller Derby skater. Time just about out in this period. Seven and eight coming up. They're cutting down the seconds. Jerry Seltzer, give us the score. The score at the end of the sixth period of play, the Pioneers 26, the Bombers 25. There is a portrait of Joan Weston as the girls return to the bank track. Jerry Seltzer, Charlie O'Connell, absolutely livid. Goes to work and nails about two or three Pioneers using some type of foreign object. I've never seen Charlie O quite so enraged. Well, I think he's just upset. The fans are on him here. The Pioneers uh, are not being humiliated by this team. And uh, I guess the Bombers, who have really, in past seasons, handled the Pioneers rather easily, eliminated them from the playoffs, suddenly find that they've got a team here. And every game of the series is going to be great. If you've got one in your area, get out and see it. In fact, you see any of the games, get out and see them. Tony Smith is injured. He's going out. And the Pioneers cannot afford this. They are very short-handed tonight. Ronnie Robinson out with the flu. Bob Hines certainly at less than full strength. Four jammers out on this particular play. Pulliam 
He nets Myers for the Bay Bombers, 31-37 respectively. Williams, Kasanovic, 50, 51 respectively for the Midwest Pioneers. There's John Early returning to the bank track. Took lots and lots of abuse. Weston going to work down, goes pulling him down, goes Peanut Meyer. Golden Girl doing her thing, doing it well, putting it all together here in the Civic Center. Roll the Derby Hotbed. This is the sport of the 70s. Down goes Kasanovic, down goes pulling him down, goes Peanut Myers. Sounds like a jumping jack, doesn't it? Sounds like a program record. Down, 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 they go. Action all over the turf. Down goes Peanut Myers, down goes Kathy Pulliam. Dolores Tucker bypassing Dolores Tucker goes Lana Kasanovich and goes Brenda Williams. There will be two pioneer points on this particular play. 10-32 remaining seventh period right below us. Dolores Tucker, Joan Weston having themselves just a little bit of conversation. By the way, Chet, the officials have just changed that call and they now only award one point, saying that one skater was not a jammer. Some big upcoming games for the Pioneers. Friday, March 23rd, Convention Center in Louisville. Friday, March 30th, Bradley University in Peoria. Wednesday, March 28th, Central High School, Champaign, Illinois. Saturday, April 14th, Wisconsin Rapids in Wisconsin. And April 10th, the Mid-South Coliseum in Memphis. And be sure and stay tuned at the end of this game. There definitely will be an interview all along this network. And uh, I guess you're going to talk to Nick Scopus. We'll get it together with the Greek snake, little Nicky. Coach of the Midwest Pioneers, playing coach, 5-0. 36, Armida Ortiz, the Latin skater, back in the pack. Weston taking abuse from two skaters. Myers, Dolores Tucker make that three for the addition of Marzi Laszlo. Bypassed is Weston by Armida Ortiz. Well, she two bomber her. jammers. Two bomber jammers went by her. This game is all tied up. By the way, uh, the Pioneers really perhaps have a... Uh, an advantage in this game, if anywhere they have an advantage, and uh, you really don't have much of any against the Bombers ever, it would be in that women's field. And that you would think in this period that the Pioneers would really try and build it up because that men's field is going to be at a big disadvantage in that last period, especially if Tony Smith is out. So we have a tie here, but if anything, I would I'd see Joni Weston really trying to put it on here. The Golden Girl, the blonde Amazon with the pivot skating helmet. The board she wears so very frequently. Out of the jab, Cooper for the Bay Bombers, followed by Williams of the Pioneers. Kathy Pulliam, number 31, Bay Bombers skater. Three jammers on this particular play. It's going to be four in a second, because here comes the Blarney Stone. The big kid, the distaff Irish wheeler with a hot temper. Big piece of ball, 5-9. A real sweetheart off the track is Darlene Forbes. Four jammers out on this particular play. Two on each side. That's the maximum you can have from each side. Laszlo goes to work on little Rita. Lovely little Rita. At the meter made, this is the bank track skater. Forbes trying to go to work at his sister teammate. There's a confrontation to end all confrontations. The jam has been called off. We remain at 27-27, under eight to play. Here in the seventh period, eighth coming up, of course, plus the interviews. We've had ourselves some kind of game so far. Just take a look at that score. Well, We're I, all even. I would have to say it again, Chet. The Pioneers are wasting opportunities here. They've got to get the points here. Remember, in most cities, there are special children's prizes, so be sure and take the whole family to roller derby. The Pioneers have a big series coming up with the Parfil Jolders featuring Jen Vello, Rosetta Saunders, Francine Koshu, Cal Stevens, Jerry Cattell, Larry Smith, Boy, what a team that Jolders is, and you're going to see them next week uh, in Madison Square Garden when they take on the Chiefs on the Pioneer Network. That game will not be seen on the Bomber Network, but you fans who are watching in the Midwest, you will see that game next week. The Blonde Tiger, Jerry Cattell, Speck Saunders. Talk about a team. Those Jolders can do it. Action back in the pack now out of the jam. Gabby Cho, show me the way to go home. I've been waiting all year to say that line. Gabby Cho. Number 35 is Monica Guest for the Bay Bombers. One on one, trying to gain position. Do a little jockeying. Going with the hip fakes, trying to gain the position. Get the advantage. Maneuver. Make it happen. Score points. Win. That's the name of the game. This is where it'll be. Excitement on the back track. The sport of the 70s. Laszlo goes to work on show. Weston setting it up, getting ready to lower the boom on Monica Guest. Come on, Golden Girl. Bango. Up high with the elbow. Goes to Weston again. Hayes is Monica Guest up front. Debbie Cho with Laszlo. Darlene Forbes waiting to make her move. Pound it out in the jam we have. Oh, with an assist from Western. One pioneer point. We're back in the lead. Jeremy Seltzer, 28 to 27. 
Well, if the fans on the uh, Bomber Network haven't figured it out yet, you're a Pioneer fan, Chet. You don't make uh, too much secret of it. Of course, they're going to have their own uh, advantage starting on April 22nd when the roller derby returns to the San Francisco Bay Area, Keysar Pavilion, and Walt Harris, the voice of roller derby for the past 16 seasons, will once again be calling that game. That's going to be something. By the way, they'll be meeting those powerful shoulders in the first series. What a season we're having this year, uh, Chet. Absolutely uh, fantastic. Incredible balance throughout the International World of Derby League. First out, number 37, Carol Peanuts Meyer for the Bay Area Bombers. There you see the Golden Girl 59, Weston. Out in the gym, joining Myers. Number 31 is Kathy Pulliam. Bay Bombers with two skaters out of this particular play. They're going to have company in just a second. Strawberry Fields, that's what I'm calling Monica Sadovich. Number 51, Midwest Pioneers. Up front, down goes three. Bay Bombers skaters. Woo! I tell you, Jerry Seltzer. If Peanuts Meyer doesn't get the hands on the hips on that particular play, Lonica Sonovich would have really reaped the harvest. She had four points there. She had four points, and Carol Meyer almost didn't make it. Now, the uh, Bomber women are arguing among themselves, which certainly doesn't help their team effort. Pioneers ahead by one, 28 to 27, but they better get a bigger lead than that, because in that last period, with just Bob Hine, who had an injured nose and uh, is just coming out of it, Nick Scopus, uh, Bill Hill, John Early, and a very injured, uh, perhaps, Tony Smith, as we mentioned, Ronnie Robinson out of this one with the flu. Better get something going. Just over four minutes remaining for the Chicks. They can forget about holding it back. Now's the time to let it all go. Reach back for the reserve. Pack the bounce to the out. Oh, back in that pack. Back in that pack. We have Margie Laszlo and Joe Wesson going at it. Look at this. Wesson work. See why she's such a great skater. That's where it's going. 17 times an all-star nomination is Joan Weston. Women's captain, Midwest Pioneers, out of the jam right now for the Bay Bombers. Number 35, Monica Guest, 36, Armida Ortiz. The Blarney Stone trying to put it together. Weston has been passed. Up steps Darlene Forbes. She calls off the jam, but not before. The Bay Bombers total two points on this particular play. You know, Jerry Seltzer, the Roller Derby Illustrated Magazine, what a tremendous publication for all Roller Derby fans throughout the country. Not an Eastern-orientated publication, as are so many sports magazines. Covers the entire country. Well, but of course, you know what every skater is doing. I'll tell you something about that, Chet. The Roller Derby Illustrated, there's your address. You can get a free copy by writing to Roller Derby Illustrated, General Post Office Box 17, New York, New York, 10001. It comes out every two weeks. The new issue, which we just have here, Features all the games, the schedules, the results. One of the biggest things we get letters about is uh, a lot of fans say, for instance, Chicago. Almost a half a million people watch roller derby every week in this area, but they say the papers don't give enough coverage. There is one paper that does, Roller Derby Illustrated. Listen to these fans of this pioneers. area. Go Pioneers, go Pioneers. No cheerleaders. Nobody has to tell them to do that. Congregation on their feet in Hammond, getting up and delivering the hymnal. Go Pioneers. There you see part of the assemblage. Little Rita. Rita Williams, 4-11, Midwest Pioneers coming into her own. Get ready, Peanuts Meyer. Get ready, Judy McGuire. This kid's going to be up in your class before too long. She really knows how to put it together. Got the shift. She's got the hip thing. She can boogaloo out there. Knows how to put it together. A Gets pull away. A pull away. Here comes the pull away. Bay Bombers trying the Pioneers' pet move. Weston setting it up, leading out the long red locomotive for the Midwest Pioneers. There you see it on your screen off the high camera shot. Here comes Weston, getting ready to unload the elbow. Come on, Pioneers. Here goes Joni. Takes away three skaters. Play it to slow. Pioneers on the hardest not to quick in time. Here comes the whip. Maintain, Rita. Come on, Tiger. Here we go. No. No, but I tell you, three Pioneer points. Fantastic skating there, Chet. You know, I was going to try and say it while it was going on, but of course that would have been impossible. Joan Wesson there, she skated with these Bomber girls for so many seasons. The Bombers have a way of working on a pullaway. To get maximum speed, they move toward the outside of the track as they were coming around the high bank. Joan Weston knew that's where they were going to be. She moved right in and was able to move three skaters out who could not block back on her. And good news for Pioneer fans in that last period. Tony Smith has come back. The assemblage of the Pioneer men returning to the bank track. 
Strategy confabs underway on both sides. 109 remaining, seventh period. I'm Chet Kopic along with Jerry Seltzer. Don't twist that dial, baby. Eighth period coming up. Hope you're having a ball all along the Pioneer Network. Peter Williams. Williams. Going to work. And goes Peanuts Meyer. Youth wins out over age in this case. But Marge Laszlo goes away, and here comes the main event. Over here on our left, we got the big ones going. These two got that match race coming up in St. Louis, Keel Auditorium, Friday, March 9th. Be sure and get out and see that one. Pioneers and Bombers. Oh, these two teams are really bitter rivals. Just a half a minute remaining in this period. The girls have skated 47 and one half minutes of excitement. They have really earned their pay, but they can be back, of course, if we have overtime. And who knows, the way this game is shaping up, that may well happen. Pioneers on top by two. Joan Weston talking with her teammate Rita Williams. Countdown is on for this period. We will not have another jam. That's it, Jet. The end of the seventh period of play, the biggest one of the, the whole game coming up. The score, the Pioneers 31, the Bombers 29. The traditional tag off has taken place. We're back in business, the result of penalties. Bay Bombers short one men, Pioneers short two men. Cook in the booth for the Bay Bombers. Hill, Hyde, sitting it out for the Pioneers. One minute on all sides. Buffalo Boyd goes to work on Hessen. Oh, baby. He you unloaded know, uh, with an elbow that geez, they probably felt in Indianapolis. If you see what O'Connell is doing here, he's going with his big man formation. Cook, who's in the penalty box, will be out there soon. He's got Boyd jamming. And this is the first period of the game that O'Connell has open skating. So they're going to try and obviously uh, bull over the Pioneers in this period. They're going to just try and drive them right out of here with, with weight. Now the clubs are back at full strength. Five on five, two blockers, two jammers, one pivot skater. Essen moving out now for the Pioneers. Buffalo Boy jamming capacity, Bay Bombers. Here comes O'Connell. Look out, Tony Smith. Look out, Nick Scopus. Two points already, Bay Bombers. They're on the attack. Hyde takes a belt. Down goes Buffalo Boyd. O'Connell to Buffalo Boyd. And the result in this particular play, I believe, will be two Bay Bomber points. Well, that ties at 31 to 31. And with 10 minutes and 40 seconds to go in the game, that has to be at the Bombers' advantage. With uh, Ronnie Robinson out of this game with the flu, although he'll be back for all the remainder of the games in the series. You have to say this, uh, Chet. I don't think it looks terribly good for the Pioneers right now. Here is where depth is going to begin to tell its story, Jerry Seltzer, and without the services of Ronnie Robinson, the veteran, the glue, the guy who holds the team together when things begin to get tough. Right now... Uh, but there's another one right well, there who won't quit. Look at that Nick Scopus go. Here comes Nick Scopus. Going to take matters into his own hands. Here comes the coach. I'll show the way, boys. I'll show my kids what it's all about. Number 31 is Alvin Mallory. Mallory Scopus, Scopus Mallory. Jamming threats on this particular play. 9.57 remaining, we're in the eighth period. I'm Chet Kopic along with Jerry Seltzer. Civic Center, Hammond, Indiana. Long time rivals going at each other. O'Connell set to help out Mallory. Buffalo Boy, jamming threat last play. Now blocking capacity with the velvet helmet on. Going to work on Nicky Scopus. Hine goes to work on Mallory. Alvin says, ouch, once. Here comes Bald Eagle again, twice. Now we got a standoff pair of one-on-one -on -one situation. Oh, look Boy, out, made, Scopus made, into Scopus. that bomber bench. Oh, they're working on Scopus. Scopus ransacked into the Pioneer bench and at the top of your screen, Alvin Mallory with an assist from Charlie O. Bypasses three Pioneers on this particular play. There you see O'Connell going to work on Tony Smith. The youngster taking plenty of abuse, turns around, flails the helmet. Well, these uh, two teams are in that big series in the Southwest and return home. Uh, the Pioneers do the Chicago Amphitheater Sunday, March 11th at 3 p.m. against these same Bombers. Big match race between Bob Hine and Charlie O'Connell in the Chicagoland area. Get your tickets at any Ticketron outlet, including Montgomery Wards. Of course, also at Ticket Central 300 North State Street. Get your tickets early for that one. That's going to be a big one. They also have games at Naperville Central High School Monday, March 12th. Hammond Civic Center in Thursday, March 15th. Dundee at the Polar Dome on Friday, March 16th. Indianapolis State Fairgrounds Coliseum Saturday, March 17th. Keel Auditorium in St. Louis, Friday, March 9th. The big match race 
Joni Weston taking on Margie Laszlo. That one in uh, Naperville, that's a uh, game that just was picked up in the last week or so, Chet, the fans out in the Downers Grove, Aurora, Lombard area, great chance to uh, see that game. They get their tickets at their Nickers, Ticket Tunner Outlet, or at Central High School in Naperville. 34-31, the Bombers are moving ahead here. I get an ominous feeling here, Chet. As James Paul moves out for the Bay Bombers on the jam, followed by Eddie Hessen, 53, white numerals, red and blue, Pioneer uniform. Charlie O'Connell in the booth, in the sin bin, sitting for one minute for the Bay Bombers. Add Hurts, the San Francisco club, to say the least. Buffalo Boy with the Pillman helmet, and act the block. Down goes James Paul. Buffalo Boy, he's got a black glove on, he's got a white glove on. Oh, beautiful jump block by Bob Hine, taking off Paul, keeping those Bombers in the pack, which is what the Pioneers have to do. Essen taking the back. abuse. Buffalo Boy lowers the boot. Now here comes O'Connell. Back to the Bay Bombers. He goes to work. And Essen is up against the railing. Now he maintains. He continues to skate. We are almost out of time on this play. Boyd with one last kiss, to say the least. Score remains. Bay Bombers up by three. 31. Pioneers 31. Jet, a uh, lot of games coming up all over. We tell the fans about them as much as they can, or they can get them free in Roller Derby Illustrated, as we mentioned. Or if you would uh, like to receive advanced information about a game coming up in your area, put your name, address on a postcard and send it to that blank at the top of the screen and mailing list. Their Roller Derby, Pale Silver's Box 1828, Oakland, California. But we got it going on the track. I'm going to work on O'Connell. Charlie O minus the helmet. Scopus goes to work. There goes the bald eagle. O'Connell, the veteran, taking the abuse. The long time all star getting his come up at St. Hammond. High, irresistible force, immovable object. There goes Scopus. Hit. High. High headlock off the railing. O'Connell days. Now wants a crack at Scopus. I'm telling you something. Bob Hyde, who is injured, you wouldn't believe it. Look at the way he went at O'Connell. The new fans in the uh, San Francisco area, you can see how it is for a visiting team, because that's how the Bombers are now. But these two are going at it at the Chicago Amphitheater on Sunday, March 11th, in that match race, Bob Hine and Charlie O'Connell. Boy, no roller derby fan can miss that one. I know they're even going to come from the Bay Area to see that. We're halfway through the eighth period. You can hear the razzmatazz in the background, directed to Charlie O'Connell. Pioneers right now, minus two skaters. They'll go with three, the Bay Bombers with four. You know, O'Connell Bob Hyde, uh, Jeff, at one time was the coach of the Bombers, too. You know, while uh, Charlie was active skater, Bob Hine was infield coach. So you got Hine and Weston on that team, both of whom uh, got a lot to uh, gain against winning against the Bombers. O'Connell in the penalty box. Hine and Scopus in the penalty box. Out of the jam early, Pioneers first skater. Right behind him, Johnny Rice, number 33, San Francisco Bay Area Bombers. Stick with us. Three-point margin can still go either way. Lots of time. Anything can happen in the world of issue. Veteran fans know. Get the rules. Get the mailing list. You fans in Chicago, get out there. I want to see a full house at the amphitheater next time these two clubs are there. Bring a group. Go to the Stockyard Inn. Have yourself a big dinner. Have some fun. This is Roller Derby, the sport of the 70s. Tony Smith, pivot skating helmet, 56 Midwest Pioneers. Young kid has been doing his thing, doing it well all afternoon long. Smith setting it up, maintaining. Got to stay within 20 feet of the pack. He's got to make up some ground right now, and he is being warned. Oh, baby! Alvin Mallory tried to make a move. Gave the dipsy doodle. Didn't work physically, but it gave Johnny Rice just enough maneuverability. Now Rice taking a belt from Nicky Scopus. Coach, number 50 for the Pioneers. Almost out of time. They're counting down the seconds. One point, Jerry Seltzer goes to the Bay Bombers. That hurts at this point. Well, the girls had to do it, and they really did for the Pioneers. They had to build that lead. The uh, Pioneers, I'm not trying to make excuses for them. Bob Hine is injured. He is skating fantastic. Tony Smith obviously hurt the last period, and Ronnie Robinson out with the flu. And you cannot be shorthand against the Bombers. Here are these fans here. 3,000 here in Hammond. That's why they turn out every Thursday. The next big game here, March 15th. You come out anywhere near, this is probably the best place to watch roller derby in this whole area. You're right up next to the track. It's fantastic building. Not a bad seat in the place in Hammond, right by Hammond Technical High School, in the Civic Center. 
Get topic, Jerry Seltzer. Moving out right now, 53 Hessen for the Pioneers. Here comes the whip. Long and lean goes Eddie Hessen with the mustache. Followed by Dynamite, Tony Roman, youth against the veteran. There goes Scopus, number 50, Pioneer. Down goes Tony Roman. Number 34, Bob Dansell for the Bay Bombers. We have four jammers out in this particular play. Tony Weston yelling out the encouragement. We need four points. Come on, Pioneers. Tony Smith's got to help his teammates. Buffalo Boyd pivot skating capacity for the Pioneers. Lots of guys that know how to score points out on this play. This could mean it all. Pioneers got to put it together. Down goes Tony Roman. Here we go. Hessen breaking it through. He scored. He pulls it off. We'll have to wait for the official determination. Two points. Two points go to the Pioneers. Check me on that, Jerry Seltzer. Is that three points? That's right, 33 points. They're only one down with two and a half to go. You know, you were talking about groups, Jeff, and uh, in the Chicago area, if you have a group of 25 or more, like to attend the game and get special prices in either Hammond or Chicago, call this number on Monday, 329-1328, 329-1328, St. Louis, call Chestnut 10884, Chestnut 10884, any other area, check your local arena for group prices. Nick Scopus is really moving. Here's Jim Paul. The Bombers are going to try and stall it. Let's see what Scopus can do. We got the first guy out. Pioneers need one. Come on, Nicky, call it off. He does. He does. Pioneers total one point. Tied and early. Riding O'Connell out of the play. We're netted up a minute 50 to play in regulation. Pioneers, Bay Bombers, this Pioneer team. Overcoming tremendous odds, minus their superstar, Ronnie Robinson. Listen All to the fans, Jeff. Behind his hurt, and on their feet, the Civic Center, Trent. Go, go, go. Oh, baby. Had to have and love their pioneers. Couple of great teams. Bay Bombers, many times champions. O'Connell says, this may be my best club. Pioneers put it together. Weston says, we're championship material. That's what Hyde says. I want to mention, Jeff. Says. Right after this uh, game, everyone stay tuned. You're going to talk to Nick Scopus. No matter what happens in this game, the Pioneers have done a fantastic job, and he is largely responsible. 35 all. This could be the last jam of the game. 107 left in regulation. Neither team with a jammer out at this moment. First jammer. Oh, it means so much at this point. It means so much at this point. Hessen trying to break through. Price trying to break through. Mallory trying to break through. Scope is trying to break through. He's being held off by Charlie O'Connell, number 40 for the Bay Bombers. 47 seconds left in clock time. Jam has yet to begin. Keep in mind, Jam can run his full complement of 60. It will not end in clock time. There you see it. The ball in progress. Scope is out for the Pioneers. 35, 35. Gotta go. Oh, no! Scope the ball. Scope is going to move. Come on, Nicky. Pioneers have two jammers out. Bay Bombers, nothing yet. Here comes Scope to coach. He'll try to bypass Buffalo Boy and Mallory and then call it off. Pioneers could win it. Minus Robinson, Gold Eagle Hurt. Here comes Scopus, down he goes. Come on, Nicky, get up, baby. We're almost out of clock time. Oh, Johnny Rice, Scopus, now he's got to watch out. But Pioneers go, ah, bango. Down goes Johnny Rice. Here comes Scopus. We're out of clock time. Jam time, about 15 seconds remaining. Here comes Scopus moving around. O'Connell sets it up with his teammate Buffalo Boy. Oh, baby. Tension, you can slice him over there. Oh, stop, 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 This is perhaps one of the best series that you'll ever see. You're going to talk to Nick Scopus in just a moment, I know, but 37 to 35. The Pioneers, fantastic skating, undermanned, tremendous. Oh, I tell you, a couple of great teams. And the final score in Hammond, Chet Kopik along with Jerry Seltzer, Pioneers 37, the San Francisco Bay Bombers 35.
Daddy got tied up in the back. <laughs> back we are in the Civic Center, Hammond, Indiana. Tremendous finish shows the Pioneers defeating the Bay Bombers by a score of 37 to 35. And I'm here to tell you, on the last jam of this particular contest, the gentleman sitting right next to me, a longtime friend of mine who needs no intro whatsoever, of course, Mr. Nick Scopus, turned in some truly incredible work. Nicky, on that last jam, when you finally passed Buffalo Boyd, 3,500 people in this arena absolutely went berserk. I wasn't too sure if I could get all the way around. I tried to jam the whole game. I was on a track jamming, and uh, of course, I didn't take every jam. I had Eddie Hessen covering for me, not covering, but they were looking for me to go. We were shaking Eddie out. They were looking for me to go. We were getting early out. And we were trying to work it like that. I was looking for Hessen to go on that last jam because I figured they would be looking for me. And Eddie got hung up. I had to go. <laughs> I came in at the rear. They had Mallory was the back there. He was the first blocker back there. And he was still fresh. Pete had skated the whole game. Mallory was going in and out, in and out. <laughs> And uh, I just kind of lucked out, I guess. <laughs> the team is determined we want to beat the Bombers. They're the national champs, and you got to get to these guys, otherwise you're nothing. So far, it's really been a tremendous series, and while we give Nick Scopus the opportunity to catch his breath just a little bit and my vocal cords to take just a little bit more of a workout at this point, a reminder for you fans down in St. Louis, Friday, March 9th, Pioneers and Bay Bombers, Margie Laszlo versus Joan Weston. They will meet in a match race. Sunday, March 11th, Chicago's International Amphitheater with a 3 o'clock start, plenty of time to get home for a Sunday dinner. Charlie O'Connell versus the bald eagle Bob Hine and Nick Scopus. Anytime you put those two veteran teammates together in a match race, you know you are going to have something. Well, Bob owes him. Uh, Charlie busted his nose, and he gave him a couple of black eyes in the first game that we had, and uh, Bob is looking for him, and I think Bob is going to get him. I hope he does. It'll be a good good victory for Bob if he can pull it out. It really uh, just just it'll back him up 1,000 percent. Nick, so far we have more than matched the Bay Bombers in terms of uh, the physical style of the game uh, and speed. I think they have just a slight edge over us in certain positions, but really I don't see any reason that we can't continue to compete with this club and come championship time. I think we're really going to be ready. Well, uh, the, my boys are, are really hitting hard. My my three blockers, Tony Smith, Ronnie Robinson, and Bob Hine are just popping them out there. And no matter how fast these guys are, they got to get by these three guys, and they're having a hard time getting past them. And uh, that's where we're winning, with those three men right there. It's, Nick. Uh, it's a team effort. Thank you much, buddy. Appreciate Thank you, it. Jeff. Thank you very much. Nick Scopus, number 50 coach of the Midwest Pioneers. Tonight, Pioneers scoring a 37-35 victory over the Bay Bombers. I'm Chet Kopik. This is the sport of the 70s. Goodbye, everybody.